the Honorable Hubert H. Humphrey. Thank you. It is the only nation on the face of the earth that is modern and industrialized that has no planning. Now, the word planning has been looked upon over the years past as an ugly word. It kind of labels you as a sort of a, a socialist or uh, some kind of an ugly term that people could put to you. I want to put it on the line to you. I don't think that this country can any longer get by without some planned use of its resources, physical and human. I think it has to have goals, defined goals. I think it has to have priorities. And I think we have to argue it out until we come to an understanding of those priorities. I think it has to make commitments. It has to set benchmarks, datelines. I hope that we're not depending on an economy that requires war to keep it sustained. I hope that we can understand that you can take an aerospace scientist that can build a space satellite or a bomber or a fuselage for a civilian or military plane and have that same person build for mass transit, for subways, or even housing. The same structural features, the same engineering principles are there. These men are needed all over America, these men and women. But we had a government with no conversion policy, and we satisfy ourselves with the emotionalism that this is a price we have to pay for reduction of military, not on your life. As we reduce the power of the military and its application, we must accentuate the power of the civilian economy and its application. And this is what I mean by a national growth policy. Now, I'm not just talking in generalities. I'm introducing legislation, which you hopefully will read about, that will direct this government to a national growth policy, that will set up the proper machinery for the coordination, that will see to it that the federal government itself doesn't distort growth as it does today. And how does it do it? By the placement of its contracts, by the placement of its facilities, by the duplication of its agencies, distorting the growth of our country. 30 million Americans in 25 years left rural America to go to urban America. If you want to know what's wrong with your cities, that's where you start. No one can possibly govern under those conditions. 600,000 rural Americans leaving rural America every year now to pile into our cities. 